Hey guys, what's going on? Hope everyone's doing well. <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. Uh, Sinvec, welcome. Uh, Fush, welcome. Thanks for the contribution and Thixius as well. And the package opening Punkshu, welcome. It's bright, huh? I don't know what's happened here. Hold on, give me one second. All right, a little bit better now, I think. Punks you think for the uh, the contribution. Okay, um, okay, so we got one package opening. This one's just uh, sort of a setup cleanup here. We got two of these guys. We'd bought an, uh, we'd bought one in the past, um, and I think I needed to grab a couple more to help clean up the setup that I have uh, with the uh, the VOD and the stream audio. The stay weird sign is so Austin. <laughs> yeah, it's Austin. Alex H two W V V G. Oh my goodness. Oh. I, I appreciate the offer. Oh my. I really do. It's a, that's a great offer. Wait, who did that? I like that guy. <laughs> I like that guy. Who, who did that? All right, so I got the, uh, these two guys. I guess I could do these off stream. It doesn't really matter. I don't need to do this right now. Uh, but it just it would otherwise clean this up. Um, I needed a, these uh, essentially mono to um, like mono quarter inch to uh, 3.5 millimeter cables um, to help redo the uh, the live stream and the VOD um, tracks here. Um, so yeah, uh, what I currently have are these like dual quarter inch monos and then I just have like one hanging off each uh, so it just kind of feels a little bit goofy right now anyways that's about it um, for for the singular package we have today Polar oh yeah uh, we're gonna Polaris today so I mean we can just start taking a look guys this is a uh, work mat um, I did some stuff off stream today I was I was opening up uh, my workhorse PC trying to take a look and figure out like what weird things did I do and what do I still need to do I think honestly it's kind of a little bit unnecessary at least for now to to go and replace all of my fans with Noctua fans because what I'd realized is that like at rest and even when I'm doing something a little bit more intense um these fans aren't that loud. They might not get that much airflow, but I think if my key is quiet, um, I think this is fine the way it is. Um, and so I think the workhorse PC is, is kind of good right now. Um, but other than that, um, we have some stuff for this, uh, this gaming PC. Anyways, the reason why I have this work mat out already is because I was just this is what I threw it on, uh, just because I knew it was going to get kind of dusty. It's probably actually pretty dusty right now. Uh, the first time I've cleaned in a, cleaned out some of the dust in a while. Do you limit your fan RPM? <laughs> um, I don't use my PC that often. So it's that, like, I just, I have the settings that I put on it from a while back. Um... I believe I put together a custom fan curve and then I've been messing with fan control to, to just sort of get things a little bit more sensible. And I opened it up because I realized the way that I had set up some of the fans was a little weird, <laughs> um, but it otherwise just needed a cleaning. So, um, but yeah, I think like at this point, one of the things I think about is if I'm doing type tests, depending on if I have both or one or both of my PCs on, one of which I need to do the recordings. I, I worry about like the sound, uh, just kind of getting into the recordings. Um, and I think it's more so a problem with my other PC. 
So my other PC, this this one that I'm using to stream right now, is dedicated just for um, streaming. I also realized I'm supposed to block this out with a toy. <laughs> Give me a second. Now let's bring back Miku. <clears throat> it is the same number of intake and exhaust and hot air rises. Yeah, that was kind of my plan, but I realized I don't really need... I don't really need to right now. Um, I think everything is otherwise kind of fine. <laughs> That's what I think. Um, why I say that is because I got into a situation where like, um, just messing with the individual fans um, or even just turning all of the fans off at any given point, um, except for the one single rear Noctua fan that I have, it doesn't sound that different. The problem is this streaming PC. For sure you don't need Noctua's. Yeah, I think for sure I didn't need anything different from what I have. Like it's, it's actually kind of a nice build and I think it's otherwise fine. But the, the streaming PC that I'm using right now to, to stream this, um, we got some issues. One is that it came with a 200 millimeter case fan, um, like with the case. Um, and I think that might be worthwhile to change to a 200 millimeter Noctua fan just because it'll be probably a little bit quieter. Um, but the crazy thing I want to be able to show you guys is this. Um, so, uh, how do I show this? I, I normally don't like uh, showing YouTube videos um, just because, you know, uh, things get kind of crazy when you do. But I wanted to show you guys this. Um, Road capture. I have this four input capture card uh, from Magewell. It's really, really nice, except for one thing. Um, so let's take a look at this. Um, there's really only like renders, which <laughs> is kind of funny. Um, let me make sure this is right. not right sorry configuring some uh, window arrangements here okay um what the h hold on Hef oh my goodness hefty keeps thank you for the uh, the tier one sub welcome welcome to the stream uh, give me one second. I'm trying to troubleshoot, um, this whole situation. But welcome, welcome. Hope your day's been going well. Yeah, that's about what we're working on, but we're, uh, we're having a little chat about my setup and, and where we move from here. Uh... Uh, that is weird. <laughs> uh, hold on. Believe me, we're almost there. What the? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. PB's, uh, KB's, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Uh, we have still messed up here. Who is that? Sorry, I'm I'm missing a lot of things. Gatekeepers, uh, thanks for the follow. Um, hmm. All right, a bunch of things have broken down here. Uh, 
Got some technical difficulties at the moment. Uh, this should be the main. I love your board. Yeah, this is the Hello M0110. We uh, we just worked on this yesterday. It's whoops. It's got Roselia uh, Roselio switches with Sprit Slow Force and GMK uh, Bento Revival. I have a display that's acting up a little bit, which is causing this to be a little problematic. Okay, uh, let's just act like everything is okay. Uh, any recommendations on a stealthy black on black or gray on black keycap set? Uh, the probably the 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 biggest clearest answer to that one would be the uh, the cherry charcoal from Novel Keys. Um. Like that that one's just like available now. Um there are probably other vendors overseas stocking it too, if uh if it's uh possibly easier out there. Um but that would that would be the one that's like most obvious to myself. Oh, okay. Oh, I think we got it. All right. Apologies. Okay, so going back to what I was talking about maybe about five minutes ago. Apologies for the uh, the long delay here. Um, so I have this um, I have this four um, input capture card here from Magewell. Um, it's pretty pricey brand new, but what's interesting is that you can actually find these like used for a much, much better price. And so um, it's cool. There's four 1080p ins on it, um, and it's really, really, really not fussy, which is a, a big problem with a lot of other more available and comparable capture cards uh, in, in the price range of one of these used. Um, <clears throat> So it's 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 I, I really like it. It's really good. Uh, it's a PCIe uh, four uh, or sorry PCIe X four um, a unit here that you would actually like punch into a, a, a motherboard. McJizzle, welcome. Cherry charcoal, nice and in stock too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what Novel Keys has done with with in stock PBT is really cool for sure. Okay, so here's here's the thing that I think I've figured out. Um, I've learned here that the fan that sits on this is really 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 loud like i've been hearing like a hum for the longest time like since i've i've put this in i guess um and i realized that it's this specifically 900 retail yeah but like they don't go for that much like like if you look for it used and sometimes whoever's selling it used are actually like they're selling something that's like almost brand new um and it's it's legit like uh i don't know these just again they don't fuss or anything like i've heard this to be a, a really big problem with uh, like Elgato um, PCIe cards with uh, Blackmagic PCIe cards, you'll get some issues here and there, and it's just like, that's what I've heard. Um, <clears throat> so uh, specifically, I'm talking about these the this PCIe like from the standpoint of PCIe stuff. Magewell seems to produce a lot of stuff that just like it just works. Um, there's not really much to it other than just get it in, like plug it in, and you're good. Um, that said, when you're, when you're dealing with other, like, Elgato Blackmagic stuff, um, the price is good. You're just, <laughs> you're just crossing your fingers, right? <laughs> like, um, anyways. Okay, so this, this little fan here, um, is really, really, really loud. And what's terrible about this is that, um, w like, the fan is connected, 
like via like a two pin 1.25 millimeter JST cable um, directly into the board. So the board is controlling it. And the problem that I, or the thing that I learned is that um, every driver except for the Mac OS driver as of 2019, um, or like since 2019, just runs the fan at 100%. <laughs> like, like this, so this fan is really, really, really loud. And the only way to like get around this is to use Mac OS apparently, because Mac OS is the only like operating system that has drivers that control the fan. Yeah, so I found this video about uh, like these, uh, I guess this group of people that, that do like Linux gaming talking about specifically this exact capture card and what they did. Um, now I'm going to mute this. Um, it's already muted. Um, but this, they do something really interesting here. Um, basically they take this, they pull it out of the board. Um, and then they, they take like a small extension cord for it and then cut off the ends. And then they take like a, I guess one half of a, like a two pin, but three hole fan connector. Oh, it's PWM. Well, the, the fan or this, so, so this right here is just, uh, it's, so yeah, this is not PWM, but what this guy did here specifically is he took an extension cord and again, I'm trying not to play the, 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 the audio of this. Yeah. They splice it up. And I guess they just kind of put it together. And the guy just, he does this thing where he talks about using this weird thing and he doesn't like it as much as just using like solder and heat shrink. <laughs> but he, he uses this weird ass thing. Um, but he otherwise just says, just use solder and heat shrink. Um, and he can actually get this to plug in um, directly into the motherboard um, and then just control it via like the DC voltage. I guess from your, your BIOS. Um, so I was just messing around today and I was looking at the BIOS I was like, okay, this is actually not that hard. You could just change the, the voltage to what this guy said he used, which seemed to be completely fine. Um, so I want to be able to do that. Uh, and I actually have like all the stuff carted, uh, in my Amazon cart, except the reason why I bring this up is cause it's interesting and I want to do it, but also because, uh, there's a, a sad reality. Um, I've never used heat shrink before. I can't imagine it's hard to use, but it's just that I have uh, no experience with heat shrink. <laughs> so uh, yeah, let me know uh, if you guys have any heat shrink suggestions, like uh, what I should buy uh, and um, uh, how to use it when I get to it. Oh my goodness. Burbs with the big old rave. <laughs> Burbless, how you doing? Welcome. How's your How's your stream? Frank, welcome. Don't worry, it's easy. Okay, all right, right on, right on. I'm well, my guy. That's good. That's good. Real good. Okay, so too too much Valorant. Real quick, so I want to know, I want to be 100% certain, um, because the, uh, the fella on the video, he pointed to this guy, um, one second, he pointed to this guy, so this is, this is the side that's the, uh, the extension, I guess, so, um, but then this is, this is just like the other side, which would just be, you know, the other side of an extension which is, I only need one of these basically on the left side, but then the, uh, the three pin connector, um, that for the, I guess the two pin connector on the fan, um, the closest thing I could find was this. And I just wanted to be sure that it was this, uh, let me, let me compress this. It's, it's gotta be, I, I can't imagine it'd be something else. So it looks like there's like the three holes, but it only takes in two wires. And it seems to be exactly what this guy used. So I just want to, okay. 
Um, honestly, I've never worried about getting any sort of special heat shrink. I just make sure you get a variety of sizes. Heat gun, probably easiest to heat shrink to keep things looking nice. But I usually just use a Bic lighter because that's what I have on hand and it works just fine. Just don't forget to put it on the wire before soldering. Okay, I don't quite understand that. Uh, <laughs> I think that kind of makes sense. Um, so it's like you put it on the wire, but then you still have to solder it together first. It's just that the heat shrink is separated from it until you bring it in. Can you um, can you just use a soldering iron to shrink it? And then again, is it is it this? This is the right thing? You need heat? I've used a lighter? Okay. I mean, you guys all use lighters. I guess I'll use a lighter. <laughs> I found a lighter in my sofa. It's not mine, but I guess it's mine now. <laughs> I also have a lighter collection. I don't even, I don't even use them. <laughs> I just, I started building a collection of lighters like five years ago. Uh, so you sleeve the heat shrink on, solder, then slide the heat shrink over uh, the joint, then heat it with the light. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Can't use soldering iron. Needs to be less focused heat. I see, I see. Okay, cool. Good to know. Uh, drop the link for the heat shrink you think I should be using for this. <laughs> if you guys care to, drop the link. I don't want to buy the wrong thing. <laughs> Any will work. Oh man, that's too much pressure, man. Too much pressure. Okay, we got a build tonight. Um... So let's take a look. Just run by Harbor Freight or use whatever you can find. It's really hard to mess up heat shrink. What if the heat shrink's too big? <laughs> Okie doke. So this is the E yellow Polaris, which largely looks orange. So you get a variety variety pack. Okay, all right. I'll pick, I'll pick something up off Amazon to go along with the order. And then as soon as it comes in, I guess I'll work on it. Okay, so this is the E Yellow Polaris. Uh, this was one of, it was interesting. Uh, I don't know exactly 100% where this came from, to be honest. Um, in terms of like, I knew very little about the Polaris buy because I think when I returned to the hobby, it was already like wrapping up, but then there was like an extra drop at the very end for uh, E black and E white. Camera white balance or is it orangish? It's it's actually orangish. I think maybe the camera's making it slightly a little tiny bit more orangish, but it's pretty much orange, like even in real life. They, they call it E yellow, but a lot of people have found it to be orange. Can you show top down? Yeah. That's fire color. I don't know what I use on that color, but it's sick. Very orange. Yeah, it's, it's really, really orange. <clears throat> um, I have in the past used um, Ski Data. Ski Data has got a nice orange legend on uh, like a charcoal color, um, like key. But uh, I think uh, I, I've used that too much. Like I, I kind of only know this keyboard from that. So we're going to find something else to use today. Um, it's either going to be CRP with uh, orange Cyrillic. That's probably what we're going to use. Um, the other one I was thinking of was Striker. Just so that it would kind of look a little bit, I don't know, super contrasty. That's that because sometimes your top down does look different. Yeah, I think uh, like I switch out lenses sometimes and then like I, I touch up the ISO here and there. Um, and then sometimes it doesn't look exactly the same. I, I recognize that, but I mostly use this camera anyways. So yeah. Also forgot to shift this down. Okie doke. So this is the board. Um, here's my, uh, here's my thought for you guys. I have three plates and two PCBs. So we have one more build sometime down the line. Exploding corn. Welcome. Welcome back and happy new year, guys. Happy new year to everybody here. Okay, so um, the one singular thing I've never used was this uh, 
FR4 half plate. I've done kind of something kind of silly though, uh, to this to this point. Um, I put the gaskets on the plates. I have I've done two builds, and I've put gaskets on both of the plates that I already have used. And I'm wondering if you guys think I should like I don't know rip them off or something. Um, I think I have, I have more gaskets. Um, someone had new gaskets cut for this. Uh, this is the person I bought the palm plate from. Happy New Year! Really like that color? Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be E-yellow, but it's, I don't know, kind of somewhat obvious that it's not. Oh, shit. This would solve all our problems. I was thinking of changing, um, cause you know, I, I mistakenly use these 1.6 millimeter, um, 1.6 millimeter, uh, stabilizers, Duroc V2s a long ass time ago before I realized that the Polaris way later down the line was a 1.2 millimeter PCB. And I just totally didn't even realize they included shims. <laughs> so I was thinking of using some TX stabilizers tonight, but I'm guessing I don't really need to. You just use this for now. That might not be enough because you need like, actually it might act, this actually might be enough. Six per PCB and there's 12 of them here. I think it's uh, then what comes, what it comes down to is I need to make sure I don't break these like I did with the, um, the walnut one where I kept like breaking the holes. Alright, I have like four more gaskets in there. Oh, there's like a case foam. Everyone's favorite thing. Case foam. And also a plate foam. Everyone's uh, second favorite thing. Plate foam. I want to! Welcome back! Happy New Year! That's my favorite color from Polaris? Yeah, it's nice. Okie doke. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a little bit of a weird situation. I've always wanted a brass plate, um, for, for the Polaris, but, um, I never got one. Uh, I, I feel like I keep getting hitches trying to find a brass plate for this Polaris, but I'm thinking it just might never happen. So, so with that said, um, an important note becomes what to do about the gaskets because I seem to have enough gaskets just for either the case or one more plate. So if it's just the case or one more plate, that's that's it. But I already have two other plates that have gaskets on them. Stick them in the case. So now it's like, okay, if I stick them in the case, then I can't mess up. <laughs> also, these, one are, these ones are called soft. I hope this works out. Wait, 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 wait. Actually, hold on. Do I have enough here? What is this? Okay, there was actually another side to this. Okay, one, two. Let me count this up. Make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That one's used. That one's kind of busted up. 10, 11. Okay, I have, I have enough for two. So I guess I could put this in the case. The, the issue is that um, this was a these were gaskets that some guy custom cut so I don't know if they match so I got like one shot <laughs> I guess two shots and then I guess down the line I'll, I'll have to rip these gaskets off unless I want to double up on gaskets I don't even think that's gonna work <laughs> which plate are you eating toward the one that doesn't the one that doesn't have gaskets on it right now. This is what I'm leaning towards the, uh, the FR4. We don't we don't do enough FR4 builds on this stream, so. This there's a lot of issues with this. This FR4 play. There's a lot of like weird residual crap on it. Happy New Year's two one. Welcome. Dorcas, welcome back. <clears throat> oh, and then here's the follow-up question. Should I use one of those uh, aluminum half plates to go along with it? Maybe I'll run a poll for that. 
All right. Let's crack this open and see how we could do this. FR4 might be a good substitute for brass plate. I kind of like the sound of FR4 plates. Do you like the sound of FR4 half plates when there's a, an aluminum section in the middle? Because maybe we'll do that. I think maybe it comes down to whether or not uh, it'll work with the uh, the JWIC switches. I can't recall whether or not there are screws underneath here. I think there there are. That just sounds like a really interesting combo. Let's try it out. Let's try it out. I had to be able to call FR4 plates mid before, but personally, I don't mind it too much. I would build this, okay, with the thingy. The thingy, right? Okay, I think there are screws under there. Sounds amazing on my auger. I've heard from a couple of people that FR4 is almost as, that's, that's kind of how I've always pictured it. Like FR4 is not that soft. <laughs> like I, I've always gotten that impression that it was not that soft. screws in there. Okay. So the thing in question here is I should just start throwing these gaskets on because I think it's supposed to work. So there should be six, right? Yeah. So let me let me again recount this. Just be sure I have the exact amount that I need. There's three at the bottom here. That one that one I should throw away. But three of these are good. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Yeah, it's not the flexiest, but it has a characteristic sound. I feel like could be. Could work really well for the alu half plate thing. All right, let's do it. And then I think uh, whenever I do the next build, I'll rip off the plate gaskets there. There's also, you know what I could also do is forgo all of this. And then I, I have that PC plate that already has um, gaskets on it and then run that with alu that would be kind of a funny thing to do i guess damn it okay I guess that's a funny thing, right, is um, the gasket choice. Like, I feel like there's so many, like, keyboard designers who say to put the, uh, the gaskets on the plates. And that's kind of weird, right? Like, why? Why is that a concern? And then I found out um, on the Live Oak, you kind of have to put at least one side of the gaskets on the uh, on the plate because there's no like there's no indicator for where you're supposed to put it on the top case so that was like the one weakness of the live oak i think
I used to be a big flex guy, uh, but I've come to realize it can make the typing experience inconsistent. I don't know. I never, I like for me, I never thought flex was like a super, super huge deal. Just, just being totally honest. Um, like, I don't know. I, I didn't think it was bad other than when you shorted because it's just so flexy that like things would like hit the bottom. No, no. Okay, I think we're good there. I guess that was, that's what case phones are. Yeah, but still kind of weird. Also, should I try writing Crytox 206 on these tactiles? Do it! I say do it. I'm not gonna lie, I really, really hate gasket, <laughs> like adhesive pour on gasket boards. You're always like one literal moment away from fucking everything up. You already low key meme Franken's uh, cherry brown bottom with a green jacket stem and a Duroc Mamba top. Uh, yeah, full send. Is this worth doing? It's worth overdoing? Yeah. I hold you liable if they turn out like dog shit. <laughs> They're gonna be great. Trust. Trust. I didn't know if I was gonna stream tonight, and I also didn't know what I was gonna do tonight. I had this build scheduled for uh, Tuesday. But I decided to push it to today just because I think um, it was important that I hold a uh, a point depository stream tonight. <laughs> for, for those of you guys who don't know, I'm running this uh, community challenge for unsealing this uh, sealed set of Perestroika. Okay, so as I take it, the gaskets probably go there. But let me be sure. Yep. Chris is doing this for us. This is a charity stream. <laughs> you got that right. Okay, this is weird because they're like... Okay, maybe... Do you guys know of any people who um, did put gasket strips on the Polaris? Because I'm realizing why it's like a little bit weird. These aren't channels. They're they're like protrusions. And so um, when when you'd actually close a case with no anything on it, like no plate inside of it, no assembly, um, you're gonna have foam pressing against foam. I can't imagine that's a bad thing, but it's just weird. I don't know. I've never done it before. <laughs> Dorcas, thank you for the lurk. Appreciate you. 
dropping by. D's. And did you look up flights? <laughs> Cause I did. They don't look good tomorrow, man. They don't look good tomorrow. Yeah, it's not happening, man. I'm sorry, man. I know and it was just so crazy because this month was all like rainy too, like the storm. Then it just disappeared. Ayo hey, Spring Roll! Welcome PBs, KBs, and Ayo hey, Spring Roll. Thank you guys for the uh, the contribution, by the way, to this community goal. Should have purchased ticks earlier in the month when they were around 150. Yeah, but I know that there was like, you know, so much up in the air with the storm, so like I, I get it. It just kind of sucks that, I don't know, the gamble didn't pay off, I guess. Damn, just saw the redeem goal. Yeah. We have a sealed set of Perestroika. One million points. As such, we have this stream here so that you can deposit your points. Last one up. Kill Combat, welcome. Thank you for the contribution. Guys, we're like really close. We've done so much. All right, there it is. All the gaskets. 43, damn, we got a lot done. Okay, doke. Um, so that's that. Uh, meanwhile, what's cool is that the shims were included here, and I never noticed. <clears throat> and so uh, I need to figure out how to break these apart, because last time I tried breaking these apart, things got really bad. Um, I think it came with, I don't remember, either possibly, I, I think it came with a PCB or some stabilizers, I don't know. I think it came with the Gateron stabilizers. Okay, so I don't know if like maybe it might behoove us to use some pliers. Oh, okay, okay. This might be the way. Alright, I don't have to, I don't think I have to do, um, stabilizers tonight. No, no new lube required. Okay, so let's try this. If I remove this, I guess I don't need the uh, the red things anymore. The paper washers.
Gotta recall how to use this. One second. I gotta grab like a paper towel or something. <clears throat> Any weebs out there? <laughs> Got any weebs in the building? Why is this so interesting? Um, hold on. I'm gonna take a uh, calipers because I'm not sure. 100% if this is really 1.2 millimeters or not Because it seems like it's not slipping under the hook Like do I have a secret non 1.2 millimeter PCB this is 1.2 I'm not crazy Chris do you stand straight? <laughs> I there's a lot there's a lot of people that was a whole thing there's a lot of, uh, I don't know if you guys haven't seen this, uh, this, uh, fella from Stray Kids posted, uh, uh, something on Instagram. I guess he was working on switch tuning and, uh, depending on where you go, um, there are a lot of people who are, who had different, different opinions on what they had seen, I guess. Some people are being very gatekeepy. Bento Revival? Yeah, that's Bento Revival up there. It's nice. Dude, what is going on with this? Bro, am I crazy? Is it supposed to be this way? That doesn't seem right. Dude, are these Duroc stabilizers like already made for 1.2? This is weird. Like they already like kind of look good. Let me try this on this guy. I sure it's dude, it is. Like like it looks really thin and I have some calipers here. That does not even get close to approaching 1.6. It's weird, but then these Durac stabilizers, like they, they don't, they're not clipping into the shims. It's, it's like this one right here is, I mean, I see a tiny, tiny gap, but I'm wondering if these shims are too thick. Maybe that's the problem. It's the shims. I mean, I can still just like try to screw it in, but it's just really weird. You just challenge them to a lube battle so you can lube in less hours. <laughs> I mean, there, I feel like there are people out there who could probably do it a lot qu more quickly than I can.
Dude, should I just use TX 1.2? Am I supposed to do it upside down? Does that that's not different at all? Maybe I'll just uh, take these out. <laughs> Hold on. I have some 1.2s here. Now, even before we lube, maybe it's worthwhile to just see, will this will this even work? Because because now I've just like become curious here about what is going on. Why is this so strange? Like, I, I think there's a chance it's the shims. The shims might be kind of... Oh, maybe oh yeah, I'll use some calipers on the shims. Yeah, these shims are too thick. It's like 0.6. It needs to be like under 0.4. Yeah, that's the problem. This was never my fault. Is there a... I can't imagine there's a backing I'm supposed to peel. Yeah, what the fuck? Okay. I, I guess I do have to redo these stabilizers. <laughs> now, if only I just had some shims that were correct, then I wouldn't need to, I guess, but... That was weird. It was warm today. I don't know how it was for you guys, but like I have the window open right now and it's like it's warm in, inside my apartment at least. And so this like breeze coming in from outside is kind of nice. I probably should have went for like a bike ride or something, but I was Dude, I don't know, man. <laughs> I was like kind of Obsessing over my whole PC situation trying to figure things out. I was up late last night really 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 debating hard as to whether I wanted to To get all these brand new fans that I realized I don't really need It's about ready to drop like 150 bucks on fans and I'm like this is not necessary We got eight inches of snow in, in about six hours. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess not every place is like it is here. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess, and I guess we'll save this for a build another day. What are we working on next after this? It'll be a while before we just randomly pick up some Duroc stabilizers to use again, huh? Uh, our next brand new build or just like you know build that hasn't been touched yet has no stabilizers will be Friday perhaps Friday either Thursday or Friday I got tracking for a, a different keyboard uh, the other day so there is another board coming in on the pipeline let me see where it is <gasps> excuse me
Still no update on the tracking. It's been a it's been a minute, but yeah, okay. Anyways, uh, we need one more. Maybe I'll take the uh, the seven U and then just do the spacebar wire replacement today and leave the extra four for another. All right, should be good. Nice new black wire. Chris, have you ever seen an all brass heavy grill asking for a friend? Uh, I think I've seen, I've seen that it was up for sale, but I don't think I've ever actually seen one in person. There, there have been some interesting heavy grails out there for sure. Um, I, I really wonder what those commissions look like in terms of pricing, because um, while it would be cool to have like crazy, crazy grails, uh, you know, heavy grails like that. Um, <laughs> like, I'm glad I never did because I don't like the board enough to justify like how expensive like those custom ones would be. Yeah, I'm chatting about it with some local peeps and I can imagine that shit would be mad expensive. Like actually, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I don't think I have, <laughs> like I mentioned, I, I don't know what board I would really want to, like, have very, very custom. Dude, Rust Steel is like, yeah, I, I have a, like, I have a veracity. It's like, I mean, that's like, like, it's nice. I love the finish. Like, is what more would I want knowing that there's really no other, like, polished steel full boards out there, right? It just seems I'm starting an all brass collection. It just had me think, ah, uh, I see. I mean, you should go for it. <laughs> if you're trying to start that collection, you should do it. Don't let me uh, poo-poo on, on this at all. I say do it. <laughs> Chris, no poo poo. Can you commission? Like Norbauer? Like, are you asking if I can, or you mean people in general? Yeah, I know. I, do, I definitely know people have commissioned stuff from Norbauer, yeah. Where's my lube thingy? Uh, had a container of lube. Oh, here it is. Why is it here? Pause. Are those switch films on the PCB? No, no, no. I think it's just like the design, um, kind of telling you where to put what for what specific layouts. <clears throat> As I understand, I think it's like, uh, where you put the stabilizers for certain layouts. Yeah, it is kind of nice. I like uh, I like that one PCB. Actually, this one has it too. This PCB tells you where to, to actually solder things in. It's, it's actually kind of nice. Yeah, I, li I like when this is done. It's, it's really, really nice. It has my future wallet upset. Oh man, you're really trying to do in the, the all brass collection, huh? I think my PP60 is either one of one or one of two. I'm not sure.
the all brass. Gonna give it at least uh, another six months before even going down the rabbit hole of considering. <laughs> Here's what I will say. Um, the PP60 I have is clear coded. And it's, I don't know what to say other than like, it makes a lot of sense, but it also is kind of a weird finish. But it makes sense, because if you, if you don't code it, it's gonna be kinda, I don't know. It's gonna get very funky, you know, with the patina after, after a long while. I like the weight of a uh, brass. There's an all brass Rama tank M60 on the local market, but I can't just do it. I just, I, I think I've seen that one. I, not that one specifically, but specifically like the idea of an all brass M60A. That would have been really interesting, but I don't, I don't think I was ever gonna. <laughs> I was never gonna do it. Uh, I don't think an all brass Rama is <laughs> something that would be super worth it to me, but. Again, everyone has different different tastes for sure. Um, I was thinking about that um, that rainbow PVD one. Um, like Rama was doing the M60Bs, and they were running like a, a like a rainbow PVD brass. It it actually looked really really crazy, but it was like stupid expensive. And I just, I couldn't justify, I really, really couldn't justify the idea of like, not, not fully trusting, uh, Rama's delivery by that point. And then like going in on something like, you know, over a thousand bucks. Like I really could not justify that. Like we're almost on year, it, it's almost been exact, like I think we're three months away maybe. Let me think. We're about a year and nine months into the uh, thermal round two. <sighs> like, and I think the M60B was like at the crux of like the uh, the Rama drama. So it's just like kind of like, uh, like uh, I I don't know. So I uh, I decided to to not get in. But that would have been cool, that Rainbow Brass PVD. Toasty! Welcome. Yeah, I'm still waiting on my thermal dam. Yeah. I and, and sucks what sucks about it too is that like <laughs> Um My Thermal. I kinda regret getting the I think I got E beige. I wish I'd gotten in that rose gold one. That would have been cool, but oh well. I got, oh, you got it? <laughs> you want to trade? <laughs> you know, in that, uh, in that distant future where we all have our, um, where we all have our, uh, our thermals, you want to, you want to trade your rose gold for e beige? I'm only partially responsible for the car delays. Ah. And here I am basking in the glory of my round one, my round one Ramakara. The car is actually, you know, we were talking about this. I, I opened up the Kara for the first time in over a year, maybe just a couple weeks ago. And I was like, the car was actually an interesting board. It really actually was like super interesting. Like the the way that it's like kind of mounted by like the plate silicone. Kind of interesting. I, I don't know that I like it, but it's a cool idea. Layout bias from Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I got GMK Daifuku coming for it too. Maybe. Why don't you like beige? Beige is lit. Um, no, it's just I think. Uh, I remember feeling like I don't. I don't 100% know why I got the uh, the Soya Kara and then the Soya Thermal. 
I felt like that was kind of a ridiculous thing to do. <laughs> Uh, and then, like, I ended up getting this E, or the, I, I think this is P beige, powder coated beige. Um, Hello M0110. I feel like that's like, I don't need this many beige boards. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it'll come in and then I'll be like, actually, this is kind of cool. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I'll find a way to justify it. Beige overload. Thermal and E white is kind of nice, or is really nice. I've I've seen I've seen people build it uh, on that first round. Uh, I think I think I've tired myself out of e white. But if I if I were to try to imagine myself in a vacuum, like yeah, the I mean the thermal in general, it's kind of cool in any color. this in here who knows it's Rama so I'm not really surprised uh, do you know why Rama takes so long two years it's kind of ridiculous um, I don't got the answers but two years is pretty long uh, I don't know I I think like for me, um, a couple of things, which was that like, you know, on my return to the hobby starting around three years ago, I think I kind of went crazy. So I, I have a pretty, <laughs> a pretty crazy stream of group buys that are still rolling in. So it's that like, I can, I can continue waiting. Um, but it's also that like my first did in the hobby too, like things were, were like the waits were really that long as well. Um, so, yeah. Kind of sucks the two-year lead time for certain group buys is the norm. It's not. It's not my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> Uh, GMK Rama Cat, who else? I think, <laughs> I think at least GMK doesn't seem, I, I feel like doesn't seem to be quite as long as some of the others. Um, and on top of that, at least like, you know, we have a pulse from them, right? Like they are putting things out, even if they're not the things that you bought. <laughs> There's a pulse there. Uh, I, I feel like I've kind of heard the situation with, with Cat, and that's, you know, rather unfortunate, but yeah.
There's also something, I don't know how true it is, but it was a post from GMK saying uh, that they were planning to be caught up on all current in the works key, cap, uh, key sets by the uh, by September of this year. Yeah. Thrash and Tony GMK, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think I just heard that too um, recently. I, I wonder how true. I wonder. <laughs> like there, there are some things where... Um, like it, it feels like there are those indicators that really are there, but then like I'll go back and like look at, you know, the things that I've personally bought, and it's like, oh, it's there's still weights here, you know, the weights still exist. Um, so we'll see, we'll see if we can hold them true. I think I think a part of it too is probably just like there was such a concentration over the last couple of years of of craziness, right, of uh, of interest. Um, and I think maybe it has in, you know, some capacity dwindled down and maybe that's also a contributor to them being able to catch up. Like for me, from my standpoint, um, like it's been the case that I just don't see as many GMK group buys that I'm interested in at this point, uh, largely because they've passed. Like I already got in on them on the ones that I am. And it's like, there's not a whole lot more new that I'm looking for. Shonies, Welcome. Thank you for the contribution and uh, happy new year. Thrash and Tony, happy new year. Thrash might be. <laughs> I believe then the bottleneck was a uh, set sorting as it was uh, hand done in the past. Oh, I see. Yeah, and then I was hearing there was some kind of like sorting automation thing that's going on right now. So we'll see. We'll see. It's like you got to see it to believe it, right? P Knuckles, welcome. You're talking about the video clip of the their automation. This is what I heard. I, I I haven't even seen anything, to be honest. So <laughs> I'm not sure. There there's a clip of it. Yeah, I saw it. I'll be sure I want uh, McLon and Heine Beige. Damn it, <laughs> dude. McLon, I feel like everyone's. I feel like McLon is like the set. Like it's McLon is good. Alrighty, here we go. Um, Oh my god, come on, man. Cool. Uh, let's see. Assemble line of arms, placing each cap into a box. Well, train not box, I see. <laughs> as long as the one robot uh, showcasing works for more than eight months with a little downtime it'll be glorious
will truly be glorious. McLaughlin is cool. Something about it looked kind of weird to me. Can't quite put my finger on it. Oh, man. I don't know. I just thought it was good all around. I feel like uh, I got in on that plus the previous two attempts to do some two previous attempts, not the two, but two previous attempts to do like something colorful on black. I never got in on Midnight Rainbow, but I'm I'm in on uh, Nocturbite, which I haven't even opened, and uh, who how high. Ah, shit. Come on, bro. Alright, I think we got it. Let's be sure of it. Ah, shit. I fucked up. I don't think that wire made it into the housing. Let's see. I've missed a bunch of uh, messages here. Um, Noche Negra base is the best one that everyone's going for. I'm not sure which one was which. I can't remember. But the one that was super colorful was nice. Um, dude, all the local peeps are absolutely shitting on Noctobite. I feel like there's some people who really think it's good. Oh, shit. Um, I, I bought it. And in retrospect, I don't really share the sentiment. I, I don't think it looks good. But maybe it's because I've done a lot of comparing to to McLaughlin, so. Yeah, maybe I should relube this. I had a big miss. Okay, should be good, but I need to clean down my space, man. I got this is the part that everyone hates about BDZ is just how damn messy it is. I think we should be good here. Alrighty. <clears throat> Paulo Cotto is the colorful one. Notion is one with darker legends. Ah, I don't like that one quite as much. McLaughlin's my first uh, Jim K group buy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> McLaughlin's really good. Did you get on Jim K Terror Below? I see you got the decimate there. Is this Terror Below? I thought this was a. Uh... Fuck. This was. um. Nautilus. I thought this was Nautilus. Because this, I bought this in like 2020. Terra Below didn't run to like late 2020 or 2021 or so. Uh, I always buy black boards, so stuff that fits. Okay, that's fair. Just a splash. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. I'm probably wrong. Check it out. I don't know. Maybe you can look up the, uh, the desk mats for it. I'm not sure what was what. <laughs> it's... I didn't get on this group by whatever this was. I just saw the desk mat and I thought, hey, suction cups. <laughs> Charcoal is really nice gray and black though, or in my opinion, yeah. DCS Reaper, yeah, I got it on Reaper for Alps. <clears throat> Ooh, it's mixed hard. 
Hmm. I wonder if we should put the um We should put the uh, the half plate. I'm going to go grab that real quick. We'll see if it works. Maybe I should just get a bunch of these cut. These are like kind of, they're cute. This is our uh, aluminum half plate or aluminum alpha plate, inverse half plate. Yeah, I gotta track down the J-Works. Just got Maestro, nice. Several pods are cool, it's about thing. Hell yeah. Hey, Jules, you ever play Splatoon? Splatoon in the GOAT game. Greatest game ever made. Dopad, love the octopus. Uh, Luna, welcome. Happy New Year. Whoa, did... Oh, that was weird. <laughs> did you guys see that? <laughs> Who was that? Is there a premonition? Oh, this is tight. Let's see how well this works out. These are JWIC black switches we're going to be trying to build with tonight. Gonna have to get coffee if I'm gonna stay up for another three hours watching Crazy Lord knows I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> and you guys already know how long I take. This is supposed to be a quick build. <laughs> but, uh, whoops. I haven't played Splatoon, surprisingly. Oh, man. Greatest game ever made. So stoked to on my all brass piggy. Oh wait, oh did, wait, did you actually get in on the the all brass piggy? You did get it. Shit, <laughs> that's crazy. I remember during the group buy, I was like, oh man, should I get it? Should I get it? Because there was a really really brief period where the uh, the buy was open for him, and um, I was like, ah, oh, should I get it? Should I get it? I didn't get it. <laughs> I just I like the purple too much. I brought the all brass aftermarket at cost. Oh. Do you have it on you already? Or is it like on the way? E clear, no PVD. Oh. Is that, that's different from the fact that they did do a PVD one, right? Purple for the win. I like the purple, the purple was cool. I'm hoping to put myself in a position to get another purple board soon. Yes, sir. That's my color. Hell yeah. We got some purple lovers in here. I think Sinvec. I don't know if Sinvec's still around, but Sinvec's a big purple guy. I've had it, but I've been waiting on keycaps, a space bar to build some switches. Okay. It's like a raw matte brass look, but with some protection, hopefully. I don't want to clean it up or patina it. It'll polish down, uh, polish down the line. 
um, and reseal if I need to. I see, I see. I, I wonder what eclair is like. I'm not familiar with eclair. Purple piggies are very pretty. Hell yeah. Cad Lab CNC spacebar coming in. Whoa. Purple boards slept on. They look so good. Yeah. I hear that wholeheartedly. Alrighty. So there's that. And now the key is throw this down also did i not oh the jaywick blacks these went in the um the b mech last time we built this it was a uh, it was on the b mech so there was no um no space bar necessary for the b mech Okay, so this is funny because there's like a couple of slots where, or there are a couple of spots where it's really, really tight. Let's see if I can get this to show up. Um, and then like they're really, really loose near the A and the question mark, but it's really, really, really tight here. But I think this will work. I think we've got to punch it in to like find out though. I think it was a good thing that I made like the uh, the edge of this so thin. Probably a very good thing. Uh, of the uh, the aluminum alpha plates. I think I was actually thinking of filling in one of my sleeves in all black ink. Wow, you should do it. I appreciate it, by the way. Thank you. So we just need to throw down the space bar, but before we do, let's check and make sure. Use our eagle eyes, make sure there's no bent pins anywhere. Oh, I see one. Oh, that's a weird one. Something weird happened with this, uh, this leg. It's like bent over big time.
Okay, we're good there. Eagle eyes. Very cool. Very cool. Alrighty. Wait, so it's not half plate, it's half alu, half FR4. Yeah, it's an inverse alu plate or inverse half plate that's just for the alphas. Okay, and then I guess we got a couple more of these. Um, so we'll use, this is slow two. So we could use our 78 gram slow two. Go birds, hey. Here it is. Okay, that's a slow two sixty eight gram spring. So this is the one that should be a little bit heavier. Been racking my brain trying to figure out where I saw that Jim K sort shorting sorting vid that's on their Instagram. I see, I see. Okay, so it's real. <laughs> Confirmed real. It's on Instagram. I lose. Oh, okay, but I lost the palette again. Okay, so what we usually do is uh, just for the space bar spring, we just go and flood this with two hundred five. Get a nice healthy amount of two hundred five directly to just the space bar spring. Make sure it's not gonna do any uh, weird pinging or crunching. I think that's good. Do a little dip. Try to reposition that film. And we're going to close this back up. And then I'm going to mark it with a silver Sharpie just so we know it's the different one. Boy, I think this Sharpie's dead. I didn't realize JWIG Black, these switches like don't even have a name on them. Zero, thank you for the contribution. Happy New Year. Thrash and Tony, thank you. Dude, I can't remember I told you, but 207 is really good on springs too. Oh, and that's an interesting one. I never tried that. I've tried 107. Never done 207. I want to do this more often with these. I should have, you know, I placed an order for those two plates. I should have ordered more of these, these aluminum inverse half alpha plates. That was a, that was probably a mistake not ordering more of these. I should just like get a bunch of these cut. Is 207 the thickest lube you could buy? I don't know. I'm sure there's thicker lubricants. I mean like this is, I don't know, is BDZ thicker? That part thing costs millions? Wow. Doubt there's thicker. BDZ is a lot thicker. BDZ on springs? I never tried that. You guys think it's good? Probably is, huh? 
It's probably really good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to tidy up so that we can get some soldering done. So, uh, excuse the delay here. We never do this, but I got to look at this. Is this spring we just took out uh, took out actually a slow two sixty eight gram? Oh, interesting. It looks a little different. Like there's more on the ends. Okay, I'm not gonna include it just cause uh, just cause of that. All right, we're just gonna put that in a little tray. A different batch had like a different amount of like coil end, end coil. I actually tried BDZ on springs. It's really easy to do it too much and makes the switch feel sluggish. Oh, wow. <laughs> BDZ on springs. I'm a feel the tight way looking at those when I open up. What teenage boy done lube my switches? <laughs> Zero spring ping guaranteed. Dang, now I know. 207 is thicker than 205 by a great deal, and I'm hoping it stays in place more. Uh, it didn't give me issues uh, without being so thick, so it's easy to overdo. Seems to be a good replacement for my old go-to of Gazoo's Blend 7. What is Gazoo's Blend 7? I have 206 grade 2. That's pretty thick. Oh, I forgot to put in the, uh, the shims. Oh. That might have almost been embarrassing. Also, we probably should test the uh, the stabilized keys before we do any soldering. Time is it? Oh, it's midnight already, huh? Funny thing, I was, uh, oh, I missed a bunch of messages here. McMaster car for the thicker stuff, they have 205 on there too. Uh, but I think it's 205 grade 2 instead of G0. McMaster, Karen, Blend zero, some mis blend 7 is some mystery mix by Gazoo meant for uh, stabilizer wires and donut dipping springs. I see. Mystery mix. Got it. Sorry I'm typing, we kind of tired and uh, typing over my loops. <laughs> no worries, no worries. I get it. Okay, what was I supposed to do again? Is there something else? I forget. Oh, testing the, the stabilized keys. That's what I had to do. Uh, yeah, we don't need 
this right now. Let's do this. Okay, a few a few things to note, make mention of. Uh, why did I do that? Why did why did I do that at all? <laughs> um, number one, I was working on some of the videos earlier too. In addition to like the PC stuff, I was working on. Um, today I was. I was working on those videos again, um, and I look. I was I was watching this guy's YouTube video, and I think I explained a little bit of it yesterday. But I, I really went through it this time, and it's actually kind of interesting. <clears throat> um, turns out, for anyone who was watching me or recalling me doing the uh, the stuff in DaVinci Resolve the other day, sounds good to me. All right, can't really ask for more. Um, I was putting in the, uh, like I was setting the color management like at the clip level and also <clears throat> setting that input color space at those, at those clips. And then I was doing like a gamma transform before I would do any of the, uh, the actual color grading. And I found this video of this, he seems to be like an older professional um, who, I don't know, the guy's really eloquent, explaining that, like, there's a, there's a kind of a nicer way to deal with it where you, uh, don't actually manage the color from the media level, um, but you punch in color space transforms before and after the color grading. So I was doing that, and, um, I don't know if that made any sense at all, but, uh, to make something actually make sense, that crazy ass video of us doing the Sango 60 type test with that uh, that stay weird sign that's behind me, and uh, we had the uh, the moody filter that was like you know making like all the sparkle effects. Um, actually, when doing this, uh, like exposed way better. It's still stupid as hell, but like it actually doesn't look like a crazy sloppy mess. <laughs> and so I was like, oh shit, that's actually kind of exciting. Um, it was weird though, like you can't really find, um, the, the proper settings for Nikon specifically, but I was like reading people talking about the Nikon spec and there's like some other input color space you're supposed to use because Nikon just kind of uses this particular standard. And I was hesitant at first, I was a little bit skeptical, but I think it did work after a while, which is kind of nice. Uh, actually, I don't know. I was about to pull out the, uh, the desoldering gun. I realized that's the wrong move. <clears throat> oh, look at this. I'm almost done. I don't know if y'all can see it. It's like coming off of the the spool now so it's a good thing i bought this like extra pound hell yeah second roll hell yeah good thing i have this backup my second trophy yeah have you guys seen my first trophy my first trophy was from my first stint in the hobby this was only half a pound and it took me through the entirety of my first like five year stint in the hobby plus like an extra year on my return and i'm almost finished with this like a year and a half ish later two years later maybe <clears throat> damn that's a lot of builds yeah and it's a lot of rebuilds too it's kind of goofy <laughs> i can't lie How good are keyboards? Welcome. Let's get this hydrate in. Oh, 
Oh. Oh, thank you for the contribution to the Unseal Perestroika. Uh, oh, okay, here's a, here's another brain buster for you guys. Uh, <laughs> brain buster. Um, for those of you guys who, uh, like, work on PCs a lot, like building PCs, um, I think, I think I need to change some of the, uh, the, what is it called? Thermal material in possibly both of my builds. So the thermal paste that's on the uh, the CPUs uh, on both my PCs. <clears throat> um, is it still the meta to like use the the literal pea-sized sphere, or have people transitioned to uh, I don't know, just like spreading it around, you know, putting it all over the place? Is that? <laughs> Is it still is it still the P thing? How uh, how offended would you guys be if someone uh, like spread it around with a little tool? Plus X X X E X or dollop. Could you uh, send those pictures? Uh, do you have photos of what that looks like? Or diagrams? I know that like sometimes you buy like a thermal paste and then they like come with a little applicator tool. Dude, people do all sorts of shit. I would see what Jay's two cents does or Linus Tech Tips because as high as those guys are, they're crazy knowledgeable. I've seen them do things that are like not the P. And so I'm just like, how come no one com like no one gives them shit when they don't do the P? <laughs> you know? <laughs> Linus usually does a small line. Uh Keeks M Reed. Welcome. Happy New Year. If it's non-conductive like Thermal Grizzly, you could just put a boatload on it and it won't damage anything, just make a mess. All right. Yeah, I need to redo it. I was like thinking of doing it today because I had my PC opened up and I was like, fuck, I got to do a lot of, I got to do a lot of stuff to get in there. Like I got to pull my GPU out. I got to do, I got to do the whole, the works. And I was like, I am not, I'm not up for this today. I was just blowing out dust and plugging in fans into different headers. <laughs> Been here for a while, don't talk much. Well, welcome. I, I appreciate the lurks. Hello, you too. Um, I don't necessarily agree. <laughs> Alright, what would be the most offensive thing that I could do? Like, is it that? Just put a boatload? Is that the most offensive? Make a cool ass. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, the most offensive thing is not put any. All right, that makes sense. Okay, so second one is... Do I... Do I need to... Or would it be necessary and or preferred to um, change any thermal material inside of my uh, GPUs? Um, my streaming PC has a 1660 Super. Honestly, I can't imagine that there's a huge problem. It's just, you know, it's whatever. I don't really care so much about this because it's just a streaming PC. But the one that I use, like, you know, for, for this stuff that's like real heavy. I have a 3090, uh, an EVGA uh, FTW uh, 3 Ultra 3090. I'm wondering if like, and it's like, it's uh, 
It's got fans. Like, it's not, like, a, a water-cooled one or anything. Does it make sense to, like, open it and then, um, I don't know, replace any of the thermal compound in it? Uh, why can't I pay, paste links in the chat? You can't? Wait. Oh, I didn't know you couldn't. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure when I might have changed that setting. I apologize. Um, how old is the GPU? I got it at launch or nearish launch of the um, the 30 series, like November 2020. So, you know, paying an arm and a leg for it. But I just wonder because I like I was trying to look at like the the temps on some monitoring software and like at least for the cpu not the gpu necessarily but the cpu just like it looked like it was a little high um but i couldn't i don't know enough to know like the like i would be kind of doing nothing but like reading temps or just like you know i'd have like a single program open in the background uh or some like most things that are just not heavy um and like I don't know if I'd call that idling, if I'm just like doing regular shit. Um, but like I was like, between the CPU and the GPU, they were kind of like sitting around like 45 Celsius, both of them. But it was also kind of a warm day here too. I don't know if that's a that's a big factor. Doubt it. If you're confident pulling apart, knowing everything goes, do some research beforehand. You aren't going to prove much by replacing the GPU uh, thermal paste typically. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, not gonna benefit much. Honestly, if you're thinking of ripping your 3090 open, you were probably better off replacing the, what, heat conductor or spreader, whatever it is, heat transfer plate. Let me find out what I found again. I see. I, I got this weird feeling that some people were mentioning, like, oh, shit, maybe, I think it might have been specifically, um, for, uh, like, the 3090 FTW 3 Ultra. They were just like, you might want to consider doing this. Um, but I never looked super hard into it. Idle temps don't ma matter much if they aren't going up a lot under load. 40 to 50 is fine, but above that could be a sign. Okay. I think there was a point where I was just, I got a little concerned because like for maybe like a good 10 seconds, I was like really not doing anything other than looking at my temps and like maybe about 10 seconds or so, like it, it went up to just like 51 and I didn't really do anything. <laughs> like, at least I don't think I did. But it it dropped down. It ended up dropping back down to like 46, 47 or so. And so if, it, if this all means nothing, then maybe it's fine. It's a bit of a temp chaser thing. I have an X mining 1080 Ti 11 gigs with stock paste, but I don't doubt it would improve temps uh, and more so on specific models. I see. All right, if you guys think it's a nothing, then I, I'll probably hold because this this whole conversation is not like I was comfortable with like <laughs> ripping open a, a GPU. I. I don't know, it's just like sometimes you you just start seeing pictures online and you're like, shit, do I need to do that? <laughs> it doesn't help much. Okay, it breaks your warranty too if you open it. I see. Whoa. Might move a few degrees. Yeah. You do it if you're confident in it. Uh, I'm. I think I'm good. <laughs> I think the the craziest thing I might do for anyone who wasn't tuned in a little bit earlier, um, I'll just show this this thing off again. Um, just real quick, I want to I want to talk about this for anyone who wasn't here for it. Um, I have this um, in my streaming PC. I have this uh, four input, 1080p capture card from Magewell. Brilliant device. It's super super good, except 
for the fact that this little fan on here is super, super loud. And it has a, uh, like a two pin JST, uh, 1.25 millimeter JST that runs straight into the board and it gets controlled here. And there's no fan control on the Windows drivers. <laughs> so I found this one video of this guy who basically, um, like just took that out and then soldered in like a two pin, but three hole connector. Um, and then just plug that into a fan header on his, uh, on his motherboard and then just controlled it via like the DC voltage and the BIOS. So, um, I want to try this, this mod. So, uh, you know, wish me luck. <laughs> Cause it's stupid loud. Like I've been hearing this for like, you know, since I got this, what, like a year or two ago, this, uh, this, this capture card. And I think like I kind of phased it out, but it like has resurfaced as like annoying because I, I get worried that you could hear this on those type tests I've been recording. Um, so the thing is it's, it's two pins. So I think it literally has to be done through voltage it, like on the motherboard BIOS. Um, like I have like an, like I have extra fan headers on the, on the board. Um, but it's just that, that's the weird, the little weird part of it. But I was going through the BIOS today. I'm like, this doesn't look that hard to just like, you know, literally I see the voltage. You could just move the slider down. <clears throat> Do you need to clean the filter in your washing machine and dishwasher? This has been a PSA for Chad. <laughs> Uh, they have copper shims and copper heat spreader plates that help keep the memory cool uh, cooler and can prevent thermal throttling, undermining, and very high slash prolonged load, but it's only worth as much as you think it's worth. Okay. I think it's kind of loud and clear. I'm probably not going to touch the GPU. <laughs> like, I'm probably not going to open it up. Open it up at all. The jump from the 3090 to 4090 was nuts. It was like the jump from the 980 Ti to the 1080 Ti. Yeah, man, like, I was, like, so happy to have a 3090. And, like, just to see, like, how many, how, like, how much strides they made towards the 4090, I'm like, damn. Damn. I shouldn't, <laughs> I shouldn't have had this. <laughs> there was part of it was like, I kind of wished I didn't, I wished I waited until the, the 40 series. I'm considering buying it. That card is dumb. The 3090? Like, I always just pictured myself, um, like, making more use of it than I actually did and using it for actual productivity purposes for how much, uh, like, for how much goes into the card. And then... Honestly, I don't think I did. <laughs> For the most part, I used Lightroom. <laughs> so. No way, 4080? Oh, oh, got it, got it, got it. Yeah, 4080 is the weird one where it's like kind of super expensive and doesn't really come that close to the 4090. Dude, I'm kind of upset the 4070 Ti is showing up on my. is showing up. My 3080 Ti in terms of price to point. Price point to performance, I see. The I think the 30 series was just so crazy. Uh just in general. Like it was a really big jump from the 20 series, I think. But I think it was just like really, really exacerbated by like that crazy rise in crypto during the pandemic when no one could get anything. You know, from toilet paper to chips. <laughs> um I mean, I think trying to get your hands on a 4090 now is probably super challenging, but, um, still, but, uh, you know, I think the, the landscape feels a lot different now than before. Thoughts on GMK sixes? Uh, I have it. I haven't used, ah, shit. That was fucking hot. <laughs> um, I haven't used it yet. Um, I did buy, a. A space bar kit, and I have two 40s kits, um, but I, I haven't actually thrown it on anything yet. So remains to be seen how much I'll really like it. I'm thinking it might be good to go with like some of my 
like I have the all brass PP60 or uh, the uh, the heavy gold arc 60 coming in maybe those might work on it or sixes might work on on those boards we'll have to see uh, don't get me wrong I love my card but god damn it the 40 series seems to be so much but yeah man it's nuts like and I just feel so like ugh. Like, I got this really nice, I got the M28U, the Gigabyte uh, monitor, that's really nice, and I'm just thinking, like, man, 4K gaming, like, can be done on a 3090, and I feel like that was the boundary that we stretched to, like, in the 30 series, but, like, it seems like 4K gaming on the 4000 series is, like, like, actually probably much better, and I'm just like, damn, damn. <laughs> 4080 seems like a steal to me right now. Really? I feel like there's a lot of people complaining that the 4080 definitely isn't. This is funny. I feel like I get more knowledge about these cards than I really need to because I don't really use them to their... <laughs> like, I, I don't do as, as much gaming or productivity stuff like as a necessity compared to how much information that I have on, on some of this stuff. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Forty eighty is the same price as a 3090, but it's smaller and has no heat issues. I see. Oh yeah, I've been seeing like all the crazy stuff about 4090s and those like burning or like melting cables. That's kind of crazy. I'm going to go from this side. Forty seventy Ti is a steal right now. 800 MSRP versus 1120 MSRP for 3080 Ti. 4070 Ti seems to be roughly 60% better. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy when you just see like the the next gen just kind of outclass. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Out of curiosity, like I, I guess this part of it, I don't actually know like the practice, but do they still sell like? Is there still stock of the 30 series brand new coming from all these like uh I don't know what you call them all these different companies? I'm guessing that it's not like they just discontinued it or ran out, right? Uh 3080 Ti slays games at 2 2K2 good GPU, but now not as sick as it used to be. I know, right? I was like really debating whether or not I wanted to upgrade to a 4K, like a really nice 4K monitor, knowing that like, fuck, this feels like, like I have to upgrade the GPU, but you know, I don't have to do anything, but still. <laughs> oh, this bottom row has a lot of good pushes there. Okay, cool. All right, we did all the alignment pushes, so we'll just sort of breeze through here now. Let's make sure. Let's take a look though. Does everything look good? I think so. I see no big issues. All GPUs seem to be in stock right now, last two gens at least. All these people are upgrading GPU down near every year with monitors that can't even push high resolutions <laughs> slash frequencies. I know, right? It's funny when it's like, <laughs> like, I don't know. The idea of bottlenecks is just kind of a funny thing. All right, I just realized I trusted where these switches go. I think I'm right. And I mean, that's kind of where they were soldered before, so I think we're good. <laughs> um, all these people, have, okay. Uh, meanwhile, 1080 Ti for 1440p, 165 hertz here, no complaints, especially with recent prices. There you go. 
Same GPU here, but uh, 1080p, 1440 hertz. Or sorry, 144 hertz. Oh well, yeah, I mean that that'll crush that for sure. Now that I realize it, yeah. Games that can use the graphics I don't play a lot, so I've never felt the need to upgrade. Dude, you know what I just like I still you know what I keep thinking about ever since I saw it was video of someone emulating um Pokemon Scarlet Violet to to be 4K60 and it was like running super smooth at 60 60 fps not even any higher than that but it like looked a lot better than than the stuff we've seen on twitter and i just keep thinking about it, i'm just like man i want to buy it but at the same time like looking at that being played on a pc looked so good did i keep buying pc games and just end up playing the damn switch instead <laughs> switch hardware is outdated now i feel like well i mean to be fair, Switch hardware was outdated at launch. <laughs> it's about the games. But it's like, damn, dude, those games look real good when emulated on the PC. Oh, man. Game my old 1660 still, uh, still surviving. It's a good card. This job don't mean it. Don't need anything more powerful. Yeah, unless you buy an ultra. Yeah, I think it's like it depends on resolution you're pushing, right? <clears throat> Upscaled emulation is sexy, but I still prefer physical hardware as a purist and collector. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta investigate this guy again. Um, I've. When it comes to games, I've cooled down a little bit on collecting. Um, I used to try to get everything physical, but one thing I learned is that digital games are just so convenient. Like, I just get all my games digitally now. Like, it's so nice to, like, I don't know, just be able to uh, quickly switch to Splatoon 3. <laughs> But you never owned digital games ever. You probably know and accepted that, but yeah, I mean, I I know, but it's it's like I'm just trying to play the games, you know. At this at this stage now, I'm just I'm just trying to play the games. Um, I think it's funny. Um, I think that like it's really really absurdly nice and convenient that like I used to get like all physical media. Because now it's like if I ever have that nostalgic kick, then like I can go serve it. What I'm hoping and banking on is the fact that like the games that I play now, like I don't think they'll hold the same same nostalgia as the games I played when, like like years from now. I don't think they'll hold the same amount of nostalgia as the kids I played or the games I played as a kid or a teenager. So, like. In that respect, I like. I think it's. I think it's fine, but we'll see how big of a regret I'll have, you know, when I'm older. I mean, it's like I kind of accepted it, you know. It's like I. I can't have collected every 
everything in terms of grabbing all that value. I'm happy to have, like, you know, and we talked about it. I'm happy to have Pokemon Box from when I was in the 7th, 8th grade. It's it's fun to, like, feel like I'm in that position, but I don't... I don't think, like, I'm, I'm gamer enough. <laughs> is that the end of this, uh... Oh, it looks like there's still more. Oh, this is not plugged in. Alright, well, there's still more. I thought the playlist ended. <clears throat> My OSSC does a decent job, but software emulation upscaling is the real GOAT. I still do it for some consoles, but I do prefer the real deal. Uh, if a publisher decides to pull a game from in the shop, not to mention the collectors, yeah, I mean, I have more about physical cards slash discs than I do about missing keyboards. I, I don't know, man. Keyboards are great. <laughs> I think it's just that, like, I've I've gone full stupid into Splatoon, so it's like that's the game that like I'm most invested in. So, like, being, like, a one-game kind of guy, and especially it being, like, a lot less popular than, than you know, some of the more mainstream games, um, it's, it's served me well in that capacity. <laughs> that I don't have to feel so much FOMO. Definitely, definitely was different prior to the release of Splatoon 1. Okie doke. That appears to be it. Oh, and it looks like... <clears throat> I forgot this wasn't a JST, so I could just plug this in right now. I do a little check-in. <clears throat> is that plugged in? It is. Via. Oh, I didn't do the eagle eyes. Oh, Zero, you make a solid point. Let's use my eagle eyes. Eagle eyes! <clears throat> Did I miss anything? I think we look pretty good. Pretty good. I think we're solid, in my opinion. Now let's check. Let's see how bad I was. Hey, Polaris in here. Real quick, I know that I've already done this in the past, but I just want to see if I've done this right. I think so. Oh, I did this, which is kind of weird. Can I just take this out? It's not even... I'm going to take that out. <laughs> All right, I think we're solid. Okay. All right, we good. Look at, look at last. What are Eagle Eyes see? They're taking Randy Ocean. Welcome back and Happy New Year. Good to have you, as usual. All right, so let's get rid of all this. I also need to get rid of this uh, this mat. We use this mat not only for this build, but also for the the dusty PC stuff I did off stream. And I had no mat under it. All right, what's a mat we haven't used or haven't used in a while and or would be appropriate? Still decided. Alright, I got one. Let's use a dandy. How's it going, V2? Welcome. No 
Okie doke, let's, uh, let's get this together. V2, by the way, welcome and uh, Happy New Year. It's been a minute. Hope you're doing well. on this E yellow Polaris which is very very orange Polaris is a classic was one of my first high quality boards yeah, Polaris is really cool, <laughs> I gotta say. She's that any yellow, but it looks sick. I know, it's, it's orange. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm gonna put bone, Boneyard on this today? Uh, no, I think we're gonna go with CRP. I have CRP orange Cyrillic. Hopefully that orange matches this this yellow. <laughs> we'll find out. Good old egg yolk, yeah. Yep. That's a classic move for sure, yeah. I've never I've never done like a stiffer build on the Polaris. So I'm kind of uh, interested in seeing this in action. We'll see if uh if, I don't know if we'll need to do a tape mod at all. But I hope not. It's it, like the players is really interesting because it's like stupidly low profile. CRP uh, R4 APL alphas would match nicely. You know, I'm not gonna lie. I thought I've always thought those APL uh, like legends were kind of funny looking. I recall I had mine built with BCPs on brass. Ah, I'm also color deficient. <laughs> so not the color necessarily for me, but like the actual like legend ligatures. Uh, I've, I've found them kind of weird. Oh, interesting. You know what? I realized I don't think I ever screwed these in tighter. Maybe I wasn't supposed to screw all these in yet. Let me get this weight back out. They're funny, but they look nice in person. I think I got to see it in person. I think that's the truth. I'm pulling this weight off again because uh, there's like case screws underneath it and I think I need to tighten those just a little bit more so. Alright, so for anyone just tuning in, we'll flip this over. I realize some people might have come in during the solder job and then now here for the assembly. But we'll talk about this build because it's a funny one. It's an FR4 half plate with an inverse alpha half plate uh, in alu. So I've been trying these uh, out recently just because, uh, you know, this idea 
stole in here from uh, from Alex Otos. Discussions on Alex Otos streams. Always seemed interesting when we were able to put this together. Hopefully it's good. Oh man, I just realized some of these <laughs> some of these films are really ugly. Like they're really misaligned. They're kind of hard to see because uh, it's a black switch and I was using black films. The closer I look, I realize I probably should have done some some film alignment. But oh well. RTY. So that'll be seven, eight, nine. I'm goth, so I can't have colors like this on my desk for more than five minutes. <laughs> LZ boards get a pass, so that's it. Fair. Classics. I don't think I've ever done CRP, nor linears, nor stiff. Have I done linears? I did silent linears. UI, UIOP. See the recent goth caps drop. That's another B. I did not, can't let myself get into artisans. <laughs> yeah, how close? Hey guys, I don't know if, oh man, it's a little hard to see because I don't have this, this is not a zoom lens overhead. Um, so I'd have to raise it up, but we'll take a look, see what you guys think of these orange legends on this E yellow case. Marcus, welcome back. Great pleasure, happy new year. I can't, I can't pronounce it, man. I'm gonna butcher it. Big time butcher. Uh, I said the same thing, and then I want an artist to fill a goofy spot on my hand or buy board, and I got like three raffle dubs in a week. Oh no. Oh loud. Still a widow. Thank you for the uh, contribution. For anyone just tuning in, we do have a community challenge here to unseal a sealed set of Perestroika. Oh. Do it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to blow it. I'm going to offend somebody. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. I have um, icon mods. I bought this aftermarket, and the price wasn't terrible. But it was interesting that it did come with icon mods. That's an interesting thing. It's like it added the alt graph key here. I might as well just put it. Why not? Do you guys like alt graph? Alt graph's kind of funny sometimes. It's like definitely not like a US ANSI thing. Very interested in clack factory skills, but the prices, yeah. It's nuts for sure. Ahoy! Still what a welcome and happy new year. Glad to see there's still Polaris going around, one of my all-time favorites. It's been a minute since we've touched this, so it's like I felt like this deserves another go around.
pretty good space bar. Pricey boys. That doesn't seem like that's the right profile. But yeah, Clack Factory classics. Classics. I feel like I should take photos of the artisans I have. <laughs> Share them where where I can. I haven't really posted much to Instagram lately. I should probably move back towards it. Where's escape? <laughs> the hell is escape? Someone stole my escape key. I'm also looking for function. Oh, you guys can't really even see this here either. Just my position. And I also can't really zoom in. All right, I need one new function. I need escape. Guess I'll just one by one try to go through it. I see meta. Where is it? Wait, is it? This is another bag of shit in here. Hold on, maybe it's in there. It's gotta be. Not sure about the function key though. I feel like function would be here. Why are there multiple? Okay, here's escape. I was dead set on getting a black skull for an HHKB, then I saw the market pain. They look so good. They are pricey. <laughs> they very much are. Oh, this doesn't have row five. That's fine. I, I do recall that um, I bought this without row five, and so I got, I got in on CRP R5 to get another R5. Which I realize that it's confusing. Ro round five to get row five. All right, so we filled it out. I have a black uh, skull for buckling spring, I believe. Oh shit. I actually have like a six cluster for buckling spring that would go good with a TKL like that nav cluster, but then it's like I don't use TKLs anymore. I don't use my SSK. That's sick. I just got an SSK and have an F on the way. Oh, nice. I have an OG Kish Saver. It's like pretty damaged, but it's pretty nice. I've always wanted to get the, the ellipse, um, like the, uh, the new version of it just to like, see if I could compare. I think like it sucks. Um, the OG one is as cool as it is like to have as a, as a piece. Uh, it's like, um, the, the right shift area is really weird and then it doesn't have split backspace. And I'm not willing to like go through and, and do all of that. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> but yeah, the, the right shift area is like, um, they have these two keys like flipped. If you had compatibility for it's a long right shift, but like the, the pads under have these two flipped. Curve repros are kind of bad compared to the original, but didn't look into it. 
I'm curious. I, I'm really curious. I've always wanted to try it out. Okay, real quick, guys. What do you guys think of the orange sub legends and how it matches the case? I think it's okay. It's 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 different, but I think like overall, I think it works pretty well. What do you guys think? Looks pretty good. Yeah, looking sharp. Also, the overhead's really bright, isn't it? Maybe uh, let's check this out. Uh, maybe that's like a little bit, a little tiny bit closer to this. A little tiny, tiny bit. I don't feel like it needs to match, but similar color wheel accessorizing just another approach. Yeah. All right, let's get rid of this guy. This is cool. It's been a long while since I've used this. All right, let's see how many shorts we got. <laughs> I wonder if the shorts really become an issue when you have uh, the plates set up like I do. Off the bat, seems okay. How bad does it get if I press really hard? Not bad. All right, the stiffness working in our favor. All right, no shorts. Really cool, and then I don't have to use that, uh, that case foam or tape mod. All righty, let's get a prediction going. I feel froggy, man, let's do 131. Prediction period is up. Uh, I'm going to go wash my hands. I realize I haven't washed my hands yet. Who is that? Zosco TV, thanks for the follow. AO3 rock solid. He's a rock. Niche 08, thank you for the follow. Oh, I had tape on this PCB. I think because I was running PC half or POM. One or the other. Oh, we got some some big bets. Big big bets. Prediction period over. Let's get a monkey type on. <clears throat> Is there anything orange? There's Tron orange. Honey, Mexican. This supposed to be like a a fast food theme. <laughs> oh, it kind of matches like the the craziness. Good lord, my eyes! <laughs> All right, that sounds like that's appropriate then. <clears throat> okay, doke. All right, thank you guys for wagering. Looks like we got. A lot of points in both directions appreciate it 
uh, with the channel points, you could earn your way to more contributions to the Unsealed Perestroika uh, Community Challenge. So again, appreciate it. Um, okay, this board. Uh, let me let me do a couple of things. We're gonna close that window. I realize I never turned on that air purifier, but we have the uh, fume extractor in the window open. Okay, so this is a uh, Polaris by AI03. Um, e yellow, even though it looks somewhat orange. Um, we have an FR4 half plate, um, an aluminum alpha plate, and uh, JWIC black switches with Sprit Slow Extreme 2 68 gram springs. And then we got this uh, CRP, um, uh, I guess a CRP Russian Cyrillic. That's what we got going on here. Uh, the threshold, I believe, we set to the goal is 131. 60 second test. Let's get the music off. I lost everything last time. Well, uh, if you got a couple more, uh, let's see. Well, let's see how we do. Let's see how we do. Okay. Let us get comfortable. Gotta get comfortable. All right, here we go. Oh my God, I blew it. <laughs> oh, I blew it. Oh, I was like so hot, but then that one last thing tripped me up at the end. Oh, that was bad. My apologies to the believers. But uh, congratulations to all those who, uh, who doubted me. There goes my house and my car. <laughs> okay, what? <laughs> what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the sound? You guys like it? Let's do a couple 30s. Let me know what y'all think. Same thing again. Double down. <laughs> Sound is so good. All right. I was just focused on the typing, so I don't know. Like I still had my AirPod. So let me let's try this again. I gotta I gotta be more into the sound. Maybe I need to start taking the AirPods off. <laughs> Sounds solid. I like it. Um, it's interesting. Hold on. Let, let me let's take a listen to this. So that's like the difference there, is that we have that FR four plate on the mods, and then Alu for the Alpha, so you could kind of hear it get a little bit higher pitched. Probably because of the yellow in the metal.
The acoustics are unassuming and pleasant, heavy on the higher pitch side, a little bit of plastic to it, not a bad thing. Mechanical sound, I agree. <laughs> At the very baseline of it, yes, mechanical sound. Okay, uh, let's do let's do a couple more 15s here with some music on. Be vibing. Can I have it? Love the way this looks. <laughs> nice space bar sound. I, I can't tell if there's like a little tick. I could I could probably try to inject some some 206 grade two in there if I if I feel like it's bad over the next day. <laughs> Alright, one more. One more 15. We'll do some some flappy bird. Okay, so that was a little bit weird. I don't know if you guys saw the previous uh, before I restarted. Um, I think I hit the space bar a little too early. Makes me think that maybe I should have gone with a, a different space bar spring than the 78 slow two. And I'm thinking one of the indicators of that would be the fact that this is a PBT set. So maybe that PBT space bar is just a little bit heavier. Also, I don't know, the warping on it too. We'll see. Um, <clears throat> So I've been told by some of my builds, this sounds like a keyboard. Absolutely does. Spacebar fits in well. Indeed. Do you sell these? Say what? Sell keyboards? Uh, I guess I've begun to try to provide uh, commissions if uh, you're interested in providing the uh, the parts. Say what? 78 slow 2. So I, I put heavier springs in the spacebar. So this is 68 slow 2 everywhere, but a 78 on the spacebar uh specifically um 78 slow too but um what i think might be helpful is um throwing down like possibly a 75 dual stage like 22 millimeter might possibly be more appropriate than this remains to be seen i'll i'll see how i feel maybe we'll try to do it we, we've done it in other builds but I, I haven't tried it with the the slow two pairing yet cal madsen welcome back happy new year all right. All right. Let's do some flappy bird type in tutor. I've tried that before in attempts to quiet it down, but I always hate the feel. I think there's always like a good spring out there to like match whatever springs you have in the rest of the board, but it's like always a matter of like trying to find it. All right, let's do this. We'll get in like six or seven games. <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> Oh my god, bro. four <laughs> I 
Oh god, bro. Always quizzical, dude. Every time with the Z's, man. And also every time with linears. This is a little better than what was it yesterday? <laughs> Shit. Alright, two more, two more. Bro, come on, bro. This game is bullshit. Bro, okay. No more. No more of this shit. <laughs> but I know something we can play. Alright, what, what did I get to yesterday? I think we got to 103, 102k yesterday. All right, prediction period is up. Let me know if you guys think I'm gonna make it to 103K in uh, Typing Tutor 5's Letter Invaders minigame. Tried Blue Alps? I have, uh, Blue Alps are great. I especially like Blue Alps in um, like plastic cases. Cheap plastic cases, oh, so good with Blue Alps. Blue Alps, hell yeah. All right. Uh, okay, guys. So this is Letter Invaders. I have a cityscape down there at the bottom. You can see it down here. I'm not supposed to let the letters fall on it. I got to type all the words and letters and characters in general. Do you guys think I can make it to 100, what was it, 103K? So these are the one you sent me. I think the one I sent you was, I forgot what it was. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I forgot what I put in those. They weren't blue Alps. <laughs> they were they were an Alps clone, but they were nice. All right, let's do this. Y'all can see I'll get through some of these uh, early. Oh shit. Oh god. Good morning, Custom 3. Welcome back. Something with Alps. They were an Alps clone, and I loved them. They were great. Naughtily. Olvin? Matthias, yeah. I had sent uh, my boy Scribbly Marks here some Matthias Alps clones. I can't remember if they... They might have been undampened tactiles, if I recall correctly. But I'm not 100% sure. They also could have been undampened linears. They're funny because they wobble so much. And a lot of people hate them, but I actually kind of like them. words, man. Okay, gotta get a new playlist in. That was Smooth Sounds Funktastic playlist. Gonna switch it up. Where are you playing this? This is DOSBox. 
You have to buy. You have to find the software called DOSBox. It's, it's free, but you also have to find the old software too. I found this. It was a, a website called Vitasware that contains a bunch of what they call abandoned wear. Seems really highly unsafe, but it seemed to be the only place I could find Typing Tutor Five. Frank, what's going on? Welcome. Get your wagers in. See if you think I can make it to a uh, hundred two thousand. Oh my god, I'm gonna ignore that shit. I haven't lost any of my cityscape yet. Hey, um, Frank, do you know? I heard that this game is a lot like Z-Type. Have you heard of Z-Type? I haven't tried it yet, but I've heard of it. Oh, bro. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Z-Type though? Like, yeah, the newest thing in the typing world. Z-Type? Is this like Z-Type? I've heard of it. <laughs> Z-Type. Yeah, is this Z-Type? Oh shit. Back or rat. Derek? Is Derek a word? Dado. Oh, okay, okay. I gotta get I gotta get seated right. The proper seating position is what uh, is conducive to a high score in this game. I still got my city. I still got my city. <clears throat> Daryl, lick my balls. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm gonna. Nah, I gotta keep this. I gotta keep the AirPod in this ear. If I if I put it in the other AirPod in this ear, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose points. I'm gonna lose my cityscape. God, this is so crazy right now. God. Oh God, I'm gonna ignore that. I have to lose my city. Peen. All right, I've lost some of my city. I have no idea how you can hit all the symbols and shit so good too. <laughs> I think it's uh, years and years of HHKB. <laughs> I think, okay, I'll talk about it after this round. There's a lot going on. Oh God. Oh God. What is that word? Oh, I could have get fucking. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh 
Oh my god, bro. Oh god. <laughs> 54k was the first breach. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, he said he has a code writer to do some type of dev work. Yeah, so so that's the thing. Like, I'm I'm typing all day, right? And so um, I think the way that it worked for me is that, like, there's no stakes. Or, I mean, there's stakes, obviously, my employment, right? But, <laughs> like, in a type test, there's stakes because you want to perform well, right? When you're typing all day for, like, a job or whatever, um, and especially knowing that, like, you know, dev work, like, you know, you might be typing symbols and numbers more frequently uh, than than normal prose passages, right? What you can do in cases like that is just like, just guess, just go for it and see if you get it. Like hit the numbers, see if you get it. And if you didn't, try again. <laughs> like, and, and you just do that enough. And that's kind of like how I've like learned to touch, like touch type the number row. It's just like, you just keep guessing until it's like memory. I mean, I guess that's typing in general. I will say after using 40 for a little bit, I can relate to that. Yeah. It's also like it becomes like a priority thing like i could see the phone number coming down and it's like there's stuff below it but i gotta get the phone number <laughs> get I couldn't get Wisconsin oh my god that's just so fucking crazy I gotta ignore that shit oh my god bro God, I lost so much. The name Gorski brings back memories. Gorski? What's, is this a famous person? Or a colleague? Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm gonna. Oh, I fucking lost. Oh, my God, bro. Oh, there was just, there was one, there, I had two parts of my city left. There were two parts of my city left. One of them had a nine digit zip code coming down. The other one had like 30 words coming down. <laughs> Bruh, this fucking game, it was like, they made it so easy for the first 50k points. And then it's just like, they turn on the jets, man. That was no good. No bueno. No bueno. Oh, so sad. So sad. All right. I think it's time for a giveaway, isn't it? We got some junk to give away. So let me, uh, let me find some, find some in the junk drawer. 
get you guys right after that big loss. I found something terrible for y'all. <laughs> you guys cool with this uh, stupid ass giveaway? I found this uh, this bag of silicone plugs. <laughs> it's just it's a bag of silicone plugs. All right. You know what the Alex drawers? <laughs> we got Alex drawers. All right. So we got the bag of silicone plugs, but if you guys care not for the uh, the actual junk I have, I'll also throw in a sticker as well. We got the uh, Cool S, the 3D Cool S stickers, any one of these, or any one of these Cool S forehead aliens, or a Kawaii Drake. One of them to go along with this bag of silicone plugs. All right. <laughs> if you guys are interested, Let's randomize and find some good, a very special country, 1% elimination rate. Let's do this. If you guys want the story behind the silicone plugs, this was actually for the first uh, month of that, the very first month after receiving that Skeleton 60 that we helicoiled. Um, but in the very first month, you know, a year prior, um, you know, those that threading was all fucked up, right? And so someone suggested, hey, what if you like tried to find something that looked like Geon tadpoles and just like try to play with that kind of idea. And I got these silicone plugs and then I I couldn't do anything with them. <laughs> like, so uh, these silicone plugs could now be yours. Exclamation play to join. Thank you guys for tuning in, watching this Polaris build. Two minutes, two and a half minutes, or a little under two and a half minutes to uh, to join on in. Also, uh, so first place finisher gets to claim, uh, but no rerolls. So uh, we'll just pass it along if you don't. Um, and last place finisher must finish the race. Uh, does get to choose the raid target. Let's take a look and see if we have any hints for who's online right now. Any makers and crafting people? I see one so far i see two so far glad to tune in actually stayed up this time yeah and relatively relatively quick er stream yeah no i appreciate i appreciate you guys being here we have tadpole mount at home <laughs> everybody say mint noise by the way welcome Welcome back and happy new year. <clears throat> All right, any keyboard stream? I see a couple keyboard streamers, but are there more? Whoa, there's someone who has an Alice keyboard, but is not doing any, uh, not doing any keyboard content. They're modding guitar picks. That seems interesting. And meanwhile, they have an Alice on the, on the table. Still looking through guys about 45 seconds left to join exclamation play to join if you haven't already and care for some uh silicone plugs and a sticker all right i see uh, gtm get is working on a rama u80a but may possibly be finishing up soonish. We're two hours into their stream, and I, they have a keyboard that looks fully built. 
Kill Combat, welcome back. Oh, almost time for the race. Oh, just in time. All right, guys. Uh, good luck. Welcome to the race. Let's take a look at this this stage here. Well, it seems like a relatively simple, fun one. All right, so GTM got is on, SC is on, and this person with the Alice keyboard working on guitar stuff is Dances with Waifus. That's a great name. <laughs> That's a great name. I've never actually seen the movie Dances with Wolves. But Dances with Wife was a great name. Last place finisher does get to choose a raid target. Oh, and Thixius Frank. Oh my god, Anthixius. Anthixius come in a hot, 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 hot. Oh my goodness. Anthixius with the win. Anthixius, might you care to claim the bag of silicone plugs? <laughs> Hey, yo! Hey, yo! All right, Kill Combat and Exploding Corn working towards uh, the last place finish. Look what happens when I actually make it through a spring. Yeah, you get some silicone plugs. <laughs> claim? Is that a claim I hear? Exploding Corn with the last place finish. Guys, if you like the, uh, the map, exclamation vote yes or no. How was I stuck? I'm fashionably late. All right, and Thixius claims, congratulations. Exploding corn, if you'd like to choose the raid target. There are a few. We got suggestions at least. Uh, GTM get, Issy, dances with waifus, or anybody you choose. No, is <laughs> a big no. <laughs> Okay, where is my cursor? Exploding corn? Raid target? Raid target? Issy? All right, let's do Issy. Okie doke. There's Issy. Uh, there's your raid message if you're subbed. There's your raid message if you're not subbed. There's the Discord if you haven't already joined it. Um, guys, I'm going to be gone tomorrow, but uh, we'll be back on Tuesday. TBD. Uh, we're working on probably the, uh, the Profit. We haven't worked on a Profit in a couple of years now. Can't find that... Oh, it's Dances. Dances with Waifus. Okay, if you guys care to watch Dances with Waifus, that's the name. But all right, well, we're rating Issy. Uh, so guys, uh, send him some love, and uh, I will see you guys on Tuesday. Good night, everybody.